Hey guys, it's Carnifex, another nerd. This video, we are doing tier two of the tier list. So you're already seeing some of them up there on the screen, but I'll go ahead and do a rundown. Now, you might be wondering what makes a tier two character. Well, a tier two character probably has a degree of arena viability. Um, or it's kind of like there, there's there's gaps so they might have some arena viability so we're going to see characters like cruel right who are extremely useful in arena but they're kind of lacking in the other areas um you're going to see characters who match really well with an extremely good character that have some good tags like venomate there's they're not complete there's there's more than one weak area you're going to be looking at um, or they might be truly, like, again, they might be truly exceptional, certainly like Master Duo, right? Exceptional use in raid, kind of like Cruella is in PvP. Um, so we're, or they might be some of but again, we'll, we'll get more into that. Um, there is going to be a little bit of future proofing in some of this stuff, and that's because I don't want to completely omit what we kind of believe to be the inevitability of the value of certain characters. But anyway, I'm going to run through them real quick. So here's the crew. We have Shadar, Venomate, Little Batty, Patriarch Cheese, Antara, Revel, Mortha, Illyria, Master Duo, Ken Lee, Ken, Ken Lee, Ken, Ken, Ken Lee, uh, Salvador, Sergeant Pigwald, Hera, Cruel, Wonderlula, Amara, and General Murdoch. By the way, guys, I know there are going to be some people who disagree with me about who's in what tier. You're going to see some funky stuff later where characters I have an overall higher rating for are actually in a lower tier than some of the characters. And I'll get into that whenever we get into the th tier three here. Um, but let me know who you think I'm snubbing, who you think I'm undervaluing, because if I'm missing something, I want to know. I want to change it up. I want to give people good info. And I'm just always, in, you know, I have fun with little, you know, back and forth about who's good, who's not, whatever. It's fun. All right. So let's get into it though you did not show up just to get an opinion you showed up to get some data so here are the rankings let's go ahead and uh, that's not going to help us is it huh so we're just going to go ahead and pull the sucker out right so scoring as you can see i've continued to hide the rest so you don't see it you have to keep watching videos all right so at the top of the list, coming in just a little under hard work, is Xantara. And there's a few main reasons why. One, she is Karahushal to the healer challenge right now. She puts out so much solid damage. She is healing something every time she attacks, reducing cooldowns, allow things like Patriarch Chi's shield to come up faster, um, the, the buffs or the heal from Soleus, which he has his own um, ability to reduce cooldown on that, but just so incredibly useful and early on you will see her in some arena teams if you kind of are a newer player and you buy a couple chests you luck out and you unlock a xantara from that you're going to use her as your healer until you unlock soleus she is the not soleus best in slot here healer um very good and again like required for uh general murdoch coming up so has some solid event contributions in raids i'm still using her in my hard work team raid which is a team that puts out like over one and a half million points she's really good um she's just not quite she doesn't make the team ever she's not ever kind of like the focal point that's why i didn't think she was truly kind of like the top tier there uh wonder lula uh, she is useful in events, for sure. She's a bounty hunter. Bounty hunter. And bounty hunters, as we talked about in the last video, right? Gold challenge, speed runes challenge. Huge. Also, you can use her to help uh, to, to get uh, Ember out. Uh, to unlock Ember. Uh, as for... And... Oh, um, uh, so, you know, sorry, briefly going back. So, Xantara, you're not going to clear level 15 to challenge until you get a gear 11 Xantara. It's just not going to happen uh, unless we unlock more characters between now and whenever you even get to the chance to do that. Right now, in the immediate future, you are not clearing level 15 until you have a gear 11 Xantara. That's why I put her that uh, for the healer challenge. Um, Wonder Lula, because she is a bit difficult to access, if you weren't participating and earning pretty high in both of those um, those tournaments for her, uh, you're you're gonna be it's gonna take a lot of tournament currency for you to be able to get her higher up um and since she is pretty much 
exclusively about damage. He does turn invisible, but people invisible, but for a challenge in the arena, it's only going to help if you have Rantha out with Battle, battle Poo. So uh, essentially, it's all about damage, and so lower number is not so good. By the time that you would get her to the point, you probably were able to clear uh, level 15 with three stars of the DPS challenge, which I'm just going to call the DPS challenge, even though I know that there are some that are more support than that. Just... Um, uh, campaign and tower, yeah, she's good for it. Begin. You're probably just gonna already have gotten all the way there before you're done with her, but she is useful on whenever it comes to if you got the elf room on the side, she's good. Um, I guess we're kind of working backwards on this one for the raid. She's still a good contributor against Mega Wheel, not as insane bonkers as she was pre nerf, but um, but still really good contributor there. Turney, solid plug and play viability. No, something I didn't say about Zantara. Zantara is great plug and play viability. Very frequently, if you see a traveler out there, um, it's it, you're gonna very frequently see Zantara's taking that place. Um, and Wonderloo as well. I there's there's like one or two token people that still use their gear eleven like all maxed out uh, Wonderloola in their arena teams that, that climb, managed to climb to the top ten in my shard. So I didn't want to knock her down too hard there. Lil Batty, right? I mean, it's a lot longer to get, and it takes a lot longer to get her because you only get her from the um, the three day events that we get. Um, so that contributes to it a little bit, but she is so solid in most areas. The main thing is she has basically no tags, basically human defender order right. Um, she is next to Voithless. She's just like Solius. All she helps out on is the health runes event. So that's really what knocks her down a bit. Um, once we have, again, once humans are required for something, this could all kind of change a little bit. For Raid, she is definitely the best in slot tank because of the turn meter reduction. Um, she even has buff removal to get rid of things like everything from the speed on um, Mega Wheel to all like the damage, etc. buffs that uh, Solius and uh, Hardor get. Little Baddie's best in slot tank for the Raid, period. Uh, attorneys, it's getting to a point where people are starting to replace her with, uh, replace Tromgar with her a little situationally, and it will vary a little bit. So since she isn't kind of like a mandatory defender slot, I'm still putting her at a four. And Arena, same thing. It's part of the reason why Tromgar is not a five, is because Little Baddie is totally viable as a, as an option for the top two tanks out there in the game right now. Um, again, campaign and tower, she's good there, but as we'll get to Kinley in a little bit, Kinley is king of tower. Um, no one else has the, like, the, the, the passive regen that he gets is just too useful there. Um, but Little Batty is certainly a great person because the, the character you tend to lose most as you get to those top levels of the tower, once it gets really hard for you, really, you, you just built up your squad a lot. Um, having a few solid tanks to throw in there so that you can kind of sacrifice your tank, move on, sacrifice your tank, move on, and then be kind of ready to go for the last one with most of your squad. Um, so she's definitely useful there. And then for challenges, um, I gave Kinley and Tromgar the fives for the defenders on uh, that challenge because they do have the ability to regen. So Tromgar gets it from applying debuffs. Um, and uh, from his regen special, and then Kinley gets it from his passive. You really want to try and utilize that in those because it, pretty much no one's going to be healing themselves. Um, but at the same time, Little Betty is good. She can, if you get lucky, her taunt can cleanse the taunt of the Kelrians, um, maybe pop someone else out of invis or get rid of an attack buff, the AoE on the blind, solid damage. She's really good there. Revel. So again, like a couple of big things. Revel is again one of those he a, he a gladiator. <laughs> we love gladiators and we love bounty hunters when it comes to uh, these events because and so we just because we already talked about the bounty hunters in this video, I'm just going to talk about it once again with uh, uh, with the gladiators. It's the ability scroll events and the damage rune events. So currently best in slot, you know, DPS runes and uh, the overall most important. Um, a reoccurring event, even though gold's great, scrolls, scrolls is greater. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, Revel, I gave him a three in arena viability just because I, I know that once we get to the freaking Pride meta, I think the Pride meta will sink the Soleus train just because that, that dodging is going to get so freaking ridiculous and we're all going to be throwing our phones and breaking them and getting new ones and revel is going to be the primary damage doer on that team i'm i'm still just terrified of that of that team because the rng just gives me the jibbies, jibbies. um 
uh, for tourney, you will see a lot of people any times a gladiator is required. Usually, if they don't, they'll throw in Ember if they have her, and if not, they'll throw in Rebel, usually. Um, uh, unless there's some kind of like synergy with Snorri going on, potentially, that would cause them to take out Ember, and even then. Ember, Ember is the best in slot gladiator for tourneys for almost all the time, but Revel is second. Um, Raid, he is the main damage cranker outer. He does need hard work in there to help stack the bleed, but whenever you stack the bleed with his passive, I mean, he's going to destroy Soleus. It's so good. Um, you're talking about the events. The challenges, again, uh, Revel's harder to, a little harder to access. You're probably pretty far by the time that you get Revel to a point where he's as, you know, start up and geared and abilityed up as some of your other characters. You've pretty gotten pretty far already. Um, it's it's definitely a lot harder to get a good score as a DPS for the challenge ones. So Venomate, super squishy. Early on has some arena viability for use with Kyra because again they're both just so farmable early on and they work so well as a tandem. Um, Turnies, I mean you've got to use tired Kyra in order for you to use Venomate. Like Venomate is never it should never be used in a turn. It doesn't have Kyra. That there's there's better options almost always unless he's actually required uh, one is pretty much you are only using this person if it's required in a tournament uh for raid again like some use there he can put out some damage he doesn't have the right mechanics to really to really contribute to the raid like some of these other characters but you pair him with kyra they'll put in some solid damage even if they don't last as long as some of these tm reduction teams um and like you know uh, slowing teams Campaign and Tower, he he, is, he makes for a really solid um, suicide team whenever you're you're earlier on. You kind of have like a more clans-esque suicide team. You have a more order-oriented, sustained team. And they're really good for throwing in there to clean up like the last couple floors. And maybe they go in to kind of like knock out somebody or one or two characters before you come back in. Um, and he is, again, like paired along with Kyra. It's like some combination of Tromgar, Kyra... Um, and Venomate is usually what people use to progress pretty far in campaign. Um, so events, he's a bounty hunter. And guess what? So's Kyra. So they get to use that synergy in the bounty hunter events. He's going to be used to get General Murdoch. You got it. Uh, challenges, again, just because of the early synergy and the early accessibility pairing with Kyra, definitely someone you could use to help clear the DPS challenges. So Kinley, uh, you. I don't, I don't foresee a future in any time in the media. We, we're going to need some meta-breaking uh, panda to get unleashed for him to get out there. Um, you, there's pretty much no way to... There's pretty much no way to ever choose can leave for either of these scenarios. But in the raid, he's very solid um, because of the dodge, because of the passive regen. Um, pairs great with uh, Patriarch Chi because of how Patriarch Chi's basic works. And he is king tank of the tower because of the, the passive regen that he has. I mean, honestly, that is so much of his freaking kit is the taunt having dodge increase. And then this potentially getting up to 20% health regen every single turn. That just reduces the number of times you need to spend a turn healing where you can save the heal from what you really needed. Um, and instead of healing, you can just use your, your Soleus, right? You can just keep damaging your Xantar or whatever you're using at the time events uh, i mean he's a panda that's it if you're a panda it means you get to help out on crit chance events so that's all all he's doing there ones are for literally nothing that's getting any points you have to be a goblin or an elf to get that so at worst he's going to be a two and then challenges i talked about this earlier because there's passive regen there's there's only a couple ways to get healing with your tanks in those and definitely trying to prioritize getting ta uh, taunts on uh, Tromgar and Kinley will help you be more successful in clearing those. Patriarch Chi, right along with him, the tower buddy. But what we get a little more of with Patriarch Chi, because we don't really get much out of him in tourney. You pretty much needs to be required for you to ever make sense to use him in tourney. But in a raid, his lead does so much for allowing these really long runs because people stack up their shields and so they can survive those big AoEs whenever they come through an all order team uh so really good in a raid uh really good in camp uh, in uh more it's more the tower right campaign you don't necessarily need to use him but he's certainly not bad in campaign uh events same thing suffers with not having uh, any useful tags uh it's really debilitating for a lot of these characters he's only getting you the crit chance event 
Um, uh, and then challenges. He is the leader I have used in order to get uh, into the, uh, as far as I have, into the healing event. I think I'm, what, level 14 now? Oh, I just turned over into the new day. Um, let me go in here. Agility. And yeah, I'm at challenge level 14, and I pretty much did it with that crew right there, these these first five, ignoring Senjiel. Um, and I used a Patriarch Chi lead. This is, oh my gosh, bonkers. You pretty much need all gear 11 with the current characters we have right now. So um, so definitely Patriarch's Chi, Patriarch Chi's lead is great in those three areas of the raid, uh, tower, and uh, for the, the healer uh, challenge. Cruel. I have hesitated. I still haven't gone on my Cruel, and it frustrates me every time going climbing the arena. I'm like, that dang Cruel, blah, 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 blah. She's really not that hard to get around if you just basically stall the taunt. If you use Kyra, you stall the taunt in your tank for the first turn. And it's really not that hard to get around, but just one wrong thing happens. One ability block comes out. One their freaking night heals slower than it should be and so it freaking dispels of all things that are out there the invisibility on one character and now that character is obliterated and it's all because i had to stall color cruel cruel is the only character outside of tier one that gets a five in here because if you have her there she should be on your arena if you have her geared up ability up she should be on your arena team period um uh, Turney, she does have a little bit of plug and play viability there just to like make the, the tanks go in vis. She's kind of taking the place of punch her face a little bit. Um, but uh, so yeah, anyway, uh, Rage, she has not very much raid viability. I mean, she has a little, and if you have her built enough for Arena, she's going to do something, but overall is not very useful in uh, the raid. Uh, campaign tower you're pretty much going to use her on the side floor other than that she again could be used like a suicide squad or like your arena squad that you continue using um, at the end uh, events I mean again let's look there's just there's so if you don't have good tags and she has not like mage there's nothing for mage there's nothing for mage it's it, it's something that you'll see in tournaments but it's not something you see for any events and so so many of these tags are just like devoid of value when it comes to events and she is one of those people she's getting in with her humans that's the only thing she's contributing on uh in challenges just because she only has a single hard mode it's just by the time you get her starred built up whatever you've probably already gotten pretty far if not all the way on the the dps challenge uh mortha now you're like Taylor, you've given such crap to Mortha. How dare you put Mortha here? Blah, 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 after all this. And hey, look, I put her at a one in Arena and Tourney. There is no good reason to be using her unless you are just so early on, all you have built is like your orcs that you're going for Solius. Okay, then she should be on your Arena team. But other than that, she should never again be on your Arena team. She should never be on your Tourney team unless it's required. Because that's the thing, even with her... Um, Unless it's like, ooh, I really need the heal the gladiator spot to be a healer. Like, oh, God, that's like it. Um, raid, just because people do build up their orcs so much, and because there's solid synergy with the leadership there with either Rantha or uh, Tromgar, I gave her a three. And just because she isn't that bad to gear up, campaign and tower, she's still the only healer. Still. <laughs> and still the only healer for clans so you kind of do need her for that and she is solid for you know like getting rid of the orcs room and stuff which most people are able to tackle uh in the tower events she is the healer for the gladiators and their tank sucks it's mega wheel so you kind of have to get most all the people that i know that have already cleared like the highest level of the gladiator stuff they don't use Mega Wheel and they use Mortha and they have Mortha really boosted up and her heals are able to sustain them long enough for the rest of them to obliterate everybody. That's it. So that's why she gets a higher score in events and that's kind of what puts her up here. Uh, if she'd been harder to gear, she probably would have dropped a little lower. Uh, and then challenges. Uh, you can use her, you can use Senjiel. I think you're you're kind of a toss-up on which one's better if you're using the Patriarch Chi lead. Uh, again, just Senjiel, there's not as much reason to invest in it for other reasons. Next, we got the General Murdoch. I did include General Murdoch on this list because we kind of we know the timeline he's going to be in. We kind of know the state of the game whenever he hops in. So he's got an overall fantastic utility kit. Uh, very 
um, very plug and play friendly for the raid, all that kind of stuff. So he's got five on the raid, 100%. I mean, look look at all the stuff that he's got, right? He's gonna have damage decrease on his basic. He's gonna be able to uh, apply the slow, or he's gonna be able to remove um, turn meter and summon allies for help if he's put like the damage decrease on there. You pair that guy with any like either a um, uh, uh, Freezard or um, Master Duo in particular, or Yogi, but you know probably one of the other two. I mean, this there's definitely some really good opportunities out there, and he can help by trying to apply slow every once in a while as well as well as doing AOE damage to all the adds, little boost to all like the order damage and everything, uh, which is not unuseful for the raid. So uh, overall, really good kit for that, but he is only a traveler um, insofar as looking at the uh, like the events and stuff, so he helps out with the potency rune event. That's the other thing he helps out with, but not really required for anything else. The defense runes are, pff, you know, again, out of all the things, it's the worst one. So he does miss out on some other things. I don't, see, I don't think we'll see him do anything to Arena because of the utility of his kit. It's possible we could see him take over for Xantara and kind of like the Traveler of Choice slot. Because if you look at the Travelers real quick, uh, as soon as you use Night EL, you need a second one, you're kind of like, uh, okay, like, I, I feel, personally, I feel like Xantara is typically the person I like to throw in there. Hard work is kind of case dependent. He certainly can be better, but it's a little more situational. Punch your face can be too, but uh, we've really seen a fall from grace there. Um, so, you just certainly have some options. It's, it's a little muddled though, which is why I don't think we'll necessarily see him uh, jump into some huge like plug and play viability and tourney, just because there are s solid alternatives that have good synergies with other characters. Uh, but events, challenges, by the time by the time you have General Murdoch, a seven star unlock character, you better be at least pretty freaking close to being done with the DPS challenge if you're not done with it already. Um, the characters you use in the DPS challenge could almost get it done on their own. So uh, Shadar. So we included him as well. Uh, definitely some solid raids. He's kind of like a slightly more like weak sauce version of General Murdoch, and he's not plug and play viable. You have to use him with demons. He has a pretty solid lead, and the the demons need that lead. It allows you to potentially kind of just run like a you know gangbusters team, no mega wheel, and just go. Um, always a chance to be applying slow with debuffs on the enemies, which is good. Um, unfortunately, Kai won't be able to help out with that too much against bosses because both of hers get resisted. 100% of the time by bosses. But increasing his own magic damage for the demons, um, uh, giving armor increase, turn meter, debuff immunity to everybody that's really significant for the raid. Stunning. Uh, you're usually going to probably just want to, just because it does so much damage stacked, I'd probably just still want to use it on the boss. But if you really do feel like, hey, this um, this Mar is about to come around and like nail everybody on his AOE that he's buffed up on. Ugh, it's probably just worth preventing that, right? But this is the main thing: armor decrease on basic. We love this sucker 100% of the time. Uh, between the leadership and that, I mean, the buff he provides really, really good. So um, not not quite game changing level because the squad that he runs with uh, only has so much viability. There's no turn meter reduction on it with all demons um so anywho uh gonna knock the rest of these uh, out pretty quick amara and sergeant piglet you're gonna see some characters in here it's like okay there's some people missing from this list that are better than these guys on here correct uh some of it's future proofing and some of it is it is kind of like a relative game it's a little bit of a supply and demand situation if there is a low supply of like top tier goblins then the ones that are kind of like a little like iffy anyway they're gonna get inflated a little bit because once we need goblins right you you're gonna need the top five goblins i i had five characters of all tags um by tier three and that was one of my things i said i was like uh, you know i if you're gonna be the fifth slot for something you're at least a tier three character so if I put in a tier three character that I'm like, man, this guy's really not great. I mean, look at this, you know, Amara is so much better than someone I might put, have put in tier three, wink, wink. Um, then I put her into tier two, even if I, even if there's some characters, there's gonna be some characters that have higher scores than Amara. So she has some solid raid viability, but it's very niche teams and it's not ones that even outproduce other ones. Um, turn to me, uh, turn to me, tyranny. Um, now she is a bounty hunter. And again, who do we love? We love our gladiators and our bounty hunters. 
uh, great tag. So for that reason alone, uh, she's certainly got some additional reason to invest in her. Um, but really not much else. Again, da damage, you already, you've already done it. You've probably already done it by the time you get her done because her, her, um, her nodes are so far back. Illyria, she's the only healer there. In If there is ever a meta, if... If, if whenever Thanessa comes out um, or uh, Fallon comes out and that allows us with some other elf that would have to introduce there to have a meta, she's the only healer. Probably going to have a healer. Uh, Turney, you are never going to use her unless you are forced to at this point. There's no kind of like synergy that really makes sense if you have other developed characters. Rage, she does have some because of the potency down. She does solid damage, solid healing. Um, she's not bad. There are just so many better alternatives. Uh, campaign Tower, you're definitely going to use her on your side. You know, we're, 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 we're trying to find reasons to like people. Um, for events, uh, elves have the defense rune events, was a little struggling, uh, but she is definitely someone you want to use in the healer event. She is uh, kind of like the definite fourth slot after Chi, uh, Zintara, and uh, Solius. She's your definite fourth slot, but you don't f need to feel like you're going to need to invest in her a ton, and then your fist going to currently be either Senji or Morth or whatever makes more sense for you. Uh, Sergeant Pigwald uh, struggles a little bit more just because, again, no, no good tags. Um, isn't really someone you're going to use to clear like campaign and tower. He does have some uses in the raid for sure. And in tourneys, he can be the good goblin that you throw in there because he does have the ability to circumvent the taunt and hit the, 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 the weakest targets. And that can keep stacking as long as you kill at least one. So definitely can use him in arena. Um, these are kind of like the, the good goblins, if you will. Uh, master duo so this is an extreme case right we have four ones and a four and a five uh very good in a few ways but really bad in all the rest uh he is in no way shape or form arena viable uh he is in no way shape or form turn uh, tournament viable he's in no way shape or form like campaign and tower or challenges viable there's so many better options it's a joke but because of the slow and turn reduction on basic and some of the other turn meter boosts and things that he gives to a really great raid character. Um, and then for events, he's a what? Gladiator. And if you're going to build him for the raid, you might as well go ahead and have him good enough for some of your gladiator events to clear those. Last two. Now, these are kind of like the honorable mentions because, again, I'm like what I was talking about with Revel. I get the heebie-jeebies thinking about what Pride could do once they have enough. So, um, anyway, I'm going to cut it off of there. You get the gist of it. Um, Got to cut myself off. So, anywho, I hope you're finding these interesting. We got another longer one uh, with Tier 3 for the next video. And then after that, I'm just going to knock I'm gonna knock out Tier 4 and Tier 5. We stop at Tier 5. Tier 5 is like, gosh, just, there's no reason. Tier 4 is like, there's like, kind of ish ever a reason. Um, they're just not so bad, you should completely ignore them. Tier 3 is the last of our, so again, who's not in here? Who should be higher based on certain of these categories you disagree with? Let me know. No is a longer video this time. I'm trying to keep it, maybe go a little less detail with the Tier 3 ones, but it was a pretty long list. So uh, thanks for hanging in there. Uh, you know, If you like the video, let me know. If there's anything you'd like to see me change, hope you're having a good one and checking out the next video.